Can the minimum wage, increasing the minimum wage, prevent a recession? Professor Richard Wolf weighs in. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. With you on the line with us is our old buddy, Professor Richard Wolf, the uh, economist, co-founder of Democracy and Work, his most recent book, Understanding Socialism, democracyatwork.info, and R.D. Wolf with 2Fs.com are his websites. Professor Wolf, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. Thank you for joining us. So 7 million people in more than 20 states got a substantial raise this week because those states raised their minimum wage. In the case of Missouri, it went from 7.25 all the way up to 11, I think it was 11.35 an hour. Um, that's a really substantial stimulus, an injection at the, at the economic bottom, which according to Keynesian theory, is the best way to stimulate an economy. It's the most lasting way to stimulate an economy. It generates demand. Um, will this, you know, we're, we're seeing the economy seeming to be strong and seeming, seeming to even strengthen as we, as we continue into this year. Could it be that this is one of the major factors as to why? Well, I think the best way to answer that is to say yes and no. Uh, what we've had is an economy that really isn't strong. It's, it's an extremely unbalanced economy. Since the crash in 2008 and nine, uh, the terror of the people running this economy was that this would become a generalized depression, like it did after the crash of 1929. And so to prevent that, they did two things. A massive stimulus program started early in the Obama administration, seven to eight hundred billion dollar injection of government spending and an even more dramatic uh, pumping up of the money supply and dropping interest rates to historic lows, even below zero. What that did was pump up the economy. But because of the 30 years of growing inequality in the United States, it really only pumped up the top 10 percent. The rest of the people in this society didn't get much of a benefit from that. And so the inflation that we had as a result with all that money didn't take place in the economy as a whole, but it took place in the stock market where prices were, have gone basically crazy as they continue to do because all that money, which doesn't find its way into the economy, we haven't increased our production very much and we haven't increased our general price level very much, but we have had an inflation uh, for the people who own stocks, the top 5% who own the overwhelming majority. And that is being called the great economy because if you have stocks, it is indeed great. Um, if you have a corporation with lower taxes from Mr. Trump, it's indeed great. But for the average people, as their politics and their voices tell us, it isn't great. They have lost good jobs and had them replaced with bad ones. Their benefits and pensions and all of those things are being squeezed. So given all of that, yes, it is the case that those states that are raising the minimum wage are doing something finally that can make the economy, not the stock market, but the economy uh, from the bottom up. Uh, I like to call this trickle up economics when you help the people at the bottom who mm -hmm. are, after all, the vast majority. That might stimulate the economy in a way uh, that you are hoping for. The problem is that it's only that handful of states that we have the absolutely scandalous reality that the last time the minimum wage was raised in the United States was in 2009, that we've gone over a decade, every one of which prices went up, except for the minimum wage, which didn't go up, which effectively meant that we diminished the standard of living of the poorest among us. So if there is some effect, it is despite the federal government and particularly the Republicans who oppose this all the time. And we are left to hope that there'll be some stimulus from those states that have taken the step to do what the federal government failed to do. Are you suggesting that the reason that the stock market has gone up or the principal reason is that there are more rich people have more money and they need a place to put that money. So there's more demand for stocks. Um, and arguably corporations doing buybacks, they're buying back their own stock, they're adding to that demand for stock. And when something is in demand, its price goes up. So we're not actually seeing an increase in the value of these stocks. Because, and we're not seeing these companies produce, you know, have greater productivity or produce more goods. 
we're simply seeing an, an, basically an inflation happening with the price of the stocks. Absolutely. And the reason for that, is you don't have to look very hard. Whether you're a wealthy investor or you're a corporation that wealthy investors invest in, you have now no incentive to increase production. The American people, the mass of people, uh, their wages have been stagnant for decades. They overcame that for a while by a borrowing binge starting in the 80s and 90s and in the first decade of this century. But they're now tapped out. That's why we had a crash in 2008, because you don't raise the wages and now they can't borrow anymore since it doesn't take a Ph.D. in economics to understand you can't keep borrowing if the underlying capacity to repay, which is your real wage, is not going anywhere. And so we're at a point where there's no incentive left for corporations to invest in producing more. They're having trouble selling what they can sell. That's why they can't raise prices of goods because there's no market out there uh, to basically pay for it. So yes, they take all the money that they earn, the profits that they get from the businesses they have, plus all the extra stimulus from the federal government, plus all the extra money from the Federal Reserve, and they put it in the only place that it makes sense for them to put it. And and here is the intriguing thing about a stock market. The more people put money into the stock market and drive drive up the prices, the greater the incentive for everybody else to do the same thing, to get in on this roller coaster as it goes up, driving the prices of the stock market way above any underlying value, which people who look at the stock market are all commenting on left, right, and center. And everybody knows that this craziness will come to a very unhappy end and that the postponement of dealing with it only makes the likelihood of a bad downturn so grim that, it, for example, Tom, this last week in San Diego was the annual meeting of the American Economics Association. People who are not radical or critical, to say the least, but even they were full of panels saying that things look very grim going forward because of this crazy imbalance between the stock market on the one hand and the mass real economy on the other. Yeah, back in the, I think it was in the early 1920s, Alfred Ponzi set up a, an operation in, in Pie Alley, a, a back alley in, in Boston, um, where he said that he was buying uh, post-World War I mail uh, coupons, stamps, basically, from foreign countries. And as their currency went down, these stamps, which could still arguably buy the passage of a letter across the con- across the oceans, was going up. And so he said, he told people he was investing in foreign postal things. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. And uh, but he wasn't actually. He was simply taking new people's, you know, paying off old people with new people's money. And thus uh, right. came came the phrase uh, Ponzi scheme. Um, it sounds like what you're describing with the stock market, where the price keeps going up and up and up because more and more people are throwing more and more money into the market, is a late-stage Ponzi scheme, is it not? Absolutely. It's, a, it's a, a crazy situation in which everybody has an incentive to get in. Because I'll give you an example. If you're a hedge fund operator, if you're a bank that is managing some rich family's money, You don't want to invest in the real economy because it's not going anywhere. You want to invest in the stock market because there you can make the 10, 20, 30 percent per year gains that everybody wants you to make. There's no other way to do that. So you go in. That means everybody else's bet on the stock market is turning out to be a good one. That encourages more people to do it. And it's a self-fulfilling kind of snowball. But as it gets further and further away from the underlying economy, it's only a matter of time before all of these companies start reporting the difficulties. Well, let me give you a concrete example. Last week, Borden's, one of the most important milk uh, dairy companies in the United States, declared bankruptcy. Why? Because people having changed their diets, they want oat milk instead of cow milk, etc., etc., they're having some difficulty. Normally, they could get through that, but they've borrowed so much money at low interest rates. They've seen such an inflation of their stocks over the years that they got heavy, and now they can't handle this downturn. Hmm. You multiply that by a few others, and you're going to have a conflagration as everybody realizes that they own stocks that are not worth what they paid for them and that they're sitting on debts that the borrowers cannot repay. 
Any, uh, we have about 30 seconds left. Any, any sense of how long it will be before this market turns around? I mean, you've got more than 50% of Americans now saying Donald Trump is doing good things economically. Yeah, it's amazing to me. I, I, I really, I, I've not seen a disconnect like this. I understand why Trump and the GOP say it, because they have to run for re-election. What terrifies me and saddens me is the number of Democrats and others who could and should know better being unable to look at this situation for what it is. To, to look at the unemployment rate in the stock market would be the equivalent of deciding the economy as if a doctor looked at you, looked at your head, looked at your foot, and on the basis of those two observations said you were healthy. You'd go to a different doctor. You shouldn't listen to people who say this economy is great. It isn't. It's an extremely dangerous place.